Systematic reviews are a type of literature review that use systematic methods to collect secondary data, critically appraise research studies and synthesise findings qualitatively or quantitatively. Its methodology evolved in response to the recognition of the multitude of research evidence being published, many studies providing contradictory findings and the need for a means by which to systematically summarise findings from multiple studies examining the same or similar research question. Archie Cochrane, a Scottish epidemiologist, wrote, It is surely a great criticism of our profession that we have not organised a critical summary by speciality or subspeciality, adapted periodically of all relevant randomised controlled trials. In response to this, the Cochrane Collaboration was formed in 1983. Its aim was to facilitate systematic reviews of randomised controlled trials across all areas of healthcare, providing the best up-to-date evidence. Now the Cochrane Collaboration is international, with multiple disease review groups who use standard Cochrane methods to conduct the reviews and keep them up to date. A critical stage in conducting a Cochrane review is the publishing of the review protocol, ensuring a clear and transparent review process. Protocols and final reviews are peer-reviewed by other review group members to maintain the highest quality standards. Cochrane reviews aim to identify, assess, synthesise and apply the results of randomised controlled trials addressing a defined question. Not all reviews are conducted within Cochrane, so POSPRO was set up and has a wider remit. It is an international perspective register of systematic reviews. It registers reviews with research questions requiring the synthesis of primary papers from a wider range of study designs than simply RCTs. For example, a systematic review may be conducted to examine outcome measures used in studies of social inclusion of patients with severe mental illness. Researchers aiming to conduct a systematic review can register their review protocol on POSPRO. When the final review is published, it is then possible for it to be compared to the protocol to assess the likelihood of reporting bias. Irrespective of the research question, a systematic review has the following five main characteristics. 1. A clearly stated set of objectives with predefined eligibility criteria for studies. 2. An explicit reproducible methodology. 3. A systematic search that attempts to identify all studies that would meet the eligibility criteria. 4. An assessment of the validity of the findings of the included studies, for example through the assessment of risk of bias. And five, finally, systematic presentation and synthesis of the characteristics and findings of the studies. Meta-analysis is the term for the statistical methods used to synthesise or pull the results from the selected studies. Not all systematic reviews will include a meta-analysis, but the studies included in the meta-analysis should have been selected using the systematic review methods. The systematic review we are going to consider in more detail in the next few steps is examining the effectiveness of educational programmes for the self-management of asthma in children and adolescents. A similar review in adults had previously shown such programmes to benefit people with asthma. A similar review in adults had previously shown such programmes to benefit people with asthma by reducing morbidity and their use of healthcare resources. A previous review of the paediatric literature had not seen comparable findings in children and adolescents. However, a number of new evaluations had been published since and it was felt timely to update the child and adolescent review.